this one will be interesting to talk about. Let's discuss Excision. This came out in 2012, and this was the, the directorial debut for Richard Bates Jr., written and directed by him, and what a fantastic debut. This is one of the best movies of the last decade, and of this this particular year, 2012, it's my second favorite behind the Maniac remake. Uh, I think this movie's just fantastic. Uh, it's not for everybody, I'll say that, but it's not something you want to miss. I would give it a shot. This movie, what's it about? It's about this little uh, high school girl. She's she's 18, and she wants to be a surgeon. She's got a sister with cystic fibrosis. She's got uh, a mom who's very uptight and a control freak, and she's got her husband like pussy whipped. Like he's just not standing up for himself. He's just the husband who does whatever the the wife wants, and it's like a family drama. And you got uh, this woman, this high school girl with these psychosexual fantasies and this delusion that she's going to be a surgeon one day and she'll do anything to prove that she can be a surgeon um so yeah it's just we're diving into the mind of a freaking weird person that's what this whole movie is it's a character study that focuses primarily just on this uh girl pauline played by Anna Lynn mccord who i think is just fantastic in this role so First positive for this movie is Anna Lynn McCord, who plays Pauline. I think she does a fantastic job. It, she just really sells it. In, in real life, she is gorgeous. And in this movie, she is one of the most unattractive women ever. Not only, like, her looks and how she just takes care of herself. Like, she doesn't look like she even, like, bathes. She just looks nasty. But also just her personality in this movie. She is the most awkward She's, you know, she's the outcast. Everyone at school picks on her for good reason. She's fucking weird. She has no filter. She just says whatever, asks any question. <laughs> she's just, she's weird. She has these weird conversations with God when she's praying, and it's just bizarre. The tone of this movie is another thing I like. It's just how bizarre it is. Like, it's uncomfortable at times. It's hilarious. I just love the feel of this movie, the look of it too, the cinematography. Like you can tell the director knew what he was doing and like even chose like costumes to like match the set design. Like there's scenes where what they're wearing it actually like goes with the whole location that they're at. So it's just a beautiful film to look at also. And I really enjoy all the weird like uh artistic visuals in the movie just all her weird fantasies and her dream sequences in the movie just very macabre and bloody and just just bizarre as hell so i love all that stuff it just really shows you who this character is it just lets you know that you're dealing with someone who is a weirdo someone who might be a bit of a necrophiliac someone who's bit maybe a bit of a sadist because she's like cutting people up or you know i don't know there's even one sequence where she's like an animal she's got like multiple nipples and people are like sucking on them and then there's lots of blood she seems to be really into blood she's sniffing her own tampons at one point so i guess she's a bit of a hematolagnia is that what it's called like you have a fetish for blood She's just fucking weird, and I love it. Like, this is the most interesting character on film to me, and, like, especially in the last couple of decades. Like, she's so fascinating. She's so weird. And the ending of this movie is fantastic. It's very disturbing. I had no idea where this movie was going, but when that last scene happened, I loved it. It is brutal. It's gory. It's emotional. It's a, kind of a gut punch. And it, it sticks with you. It's shocking, jaw-dropping. I just, I love it. It's fantastic. And the movie is shot well, and it flies by, really. This is not a long movie. Uh, you take away the credits, this movie is only like an hour and 20 minutes. So it's a very short run time. And the biggest thing is that this movie is unique. I can't name a single movie that's identical to this, that has a main character as weird and delusional and just messed as messed up as this chick and like i just think this movie is so unique it's so fresh and a modern day classic i have really nothing negative to say about this movie the only thing i can say that's not really a negative but i'll just say that it's not for everybody 
it's definitely not for everyone. And it doesn't have like a lot of horror in it. It's mainly just a weird, uncomfortable, funny family drama and a character study and with like no scare sequences. Like there's nothing in this movie that's scary except for what happens at the end. You know, it's scary to think that people like this exist, but in this movie there's no scare sequences, there's nothing being thrown at the screen, there's nothing that's creepy looking. You know, there's just her dream sequences that are horrific, I guess, you know, because there's lots of blood and her cutting up dead bodies and whatnot, you know. But it's not horror, really, to me. Like, this movie doesn't feel much like a horror movie. It's just, it's got those bloody fantasies. They're just fantasies. And then you got that ending, which is the horror. So, yeah, it's, and maybe that might turn some people off if you're looking for, like, a horror movie, something to scare you. This is made not to scare you, really, but to unsettle you and shock you and make you laugh and make you just feel uncomfortable. And that's what I really like about the movie. So, uh, final thoughts. I absolutely adore this film. I think it's very fresh and unique. And I love the main actress here, Anna Lynn McCord. I love this character. I just think it's so fucking great. So, when it comes to Excision, this is a movie that if you have not seen it, you need to check it out. Go out and buy it because to me, I think this movie is a modern day masterpiece. Time for a spoiler discussion, so this will be fun. Um, so we get the first fantasy. This movie opens up with the fantasy and the you know the blue background, just the way it looks. It's great, and she's like looking at a doppelganger, like a clone of herself, who's like bleeding out of every orifice and just like convulsing and like looks like she's dying and then she's just kind of getting off on it the other version of herself like she's having like an orgasm looking at pain someone suffering and bleeding just the blood's getting her off like i said it's just she's very messed up she's very into blood and then the next day at school she's asking the teacher like can you get stds from having sex with dead bodies so i guessing she's a necrophiliac she has an interest in fucking dead people why else would she be asking that question and they say there's no such thing as stupid questions but then you hear that question <laughs> um so then this guy apparently being 18 years old can't get a hard on by this chick really that girl she's like talking to her friend like yeah last night he just couldn't get it up and she's like, oh, how big was it? And she holds, like, a little mini carrot. And she was like, yeah, it was that small. Like, There's lots of funny, like, sexual humor in the movie, too. And it's like, really? With that girl? Like, he must have been shit-faced drunk or something. Like, how can he not get a, an erection from her? Like, she is so hot. So that blew my mind. And then we got John Waters in the movie as the priest. <laughs> Every conversation she has in this movie with anybody is gold. With her mom, with... John Waters with Ray Weiss later on, Marley Matlin. You got the deaf girl, the deaf celebrity here. Everything she says is just funny and inappropriate. She has no filter. There's one moment where a girl is like trying to like bully her, but she's like, are you done? I got to go take a shit. <laughs> no lady talks like that. This is like, she's a tomboy. She's not all about that pink shit. Like she, she has bad posture. Her mom wants her to fit this image that she has. She wants to be her to be the perfect daughter, and she ain't having none of that shit. She's going to dress the way she wants. You know, she's just the opposite of a lady. She is just, she's like a guy. She's like, I got to go take a shit. And so we got Malcolm McDowell, and he's a teacher, and he's basically playing himself in this movie. I feel like that's his personality. I, he plays that kind of character in every movie. No matter what his profession is, he has that attitude, Malcolm, in every movie. Um, so yeah, and then she's having all these inappropriate conversations with, with God when she's praying. You know, like, you know, you have to forgive me. Like, what she's saying makes it, it's a, it's a good point. <laughs> she makes some good points. Like, yeah, you, you kind of have to forgive me. I plan on having sex this weekend. I know you frown upon that, but, you know, as long as I ask for ask for forgiveness, you have to forgive me, right? So that's kind of cool. And then she's like, if people, if my relatives can see what I'm doing down here, that's kind of messed up and that's going to sour our relationship it, when, you know, when I come up there, if I do go up there. Like, everything she says is funny to me. And then later on, she's even praying about, you know, can you kill my mom because she's a thorn in my side? I just want to, can you kill her? You can make it painless. Do whatever. Just get rid of the bitch. <laughs> she is just weird and then 
she's dreaming about kissing this corpse that's missing half its head. I'm not sure who that corpse is, if it's her, or I think it might be the guy. It might be a, a male body, because they show its feet, and it has hairy legs and hairy feet. So I'm guessing it's a guy. Maybe it's the guy she plans on banging later on after that. Um, but that CGI of the, the head, awful. Awful. Absolutely awful CGI. Uh, I wish this was a real thing, if that that this actually happened. Uh, a woman coming up to you and giving you her number and being like, here's my number, I want you to take my virginity. Like, she is so forward. She's more forward than Becky, or what's her face? Ah, shit. That's not Becky. That one chick in Friday the 13th Part 2, like with Mark, the guy in the wheelchair. Vicky! I was close. Vicky. She's like, you know, what position you want to play for? Your fingers. or something. Like, everything she says, she was being very forward. In this one, Pauline just goes up to this guy, hands him her number, and is like, listen, I want you to take my virginity. You're at the top of my list of guys I'm going to. All right, consider. All right, just give it a thought. All right, consider it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then he actually takes her up on that offer. I don't know why. Um, You know, being who she is and whatnot. So... But then, yeah, so then they go to the hotel to have sex, and again, just comedy gold, like, she's like, take down your pants, he's like, I got my brother's condoms, the extra large ones, and he pulls down his pants, and she looks at his dick, and she's like, I don't think you're gonna be needing these, <laughs> not the extra large ones, and, but he's, she's like, that's okay, I'm on birth control, so then they're having sex, and she knows that she's on her period, and she makes him go down on her, and then he freaks out, he goes to the mirror, he has a mouthful of blood, he's panicking, he's like, oh, disgusting, ugh. And, but while they're also, they're having sex before that, and she's having these fantasies of her basically menstruating all over him in like gallons of blood, just blood everywhere on the mattress, just going everywhere, like the shining when it comes out of the elevator, like blood just fucking everywhere like that's her fantasy that's what she wishes was happening during that she's fucking weird and so yeah <laughs> i love when you know after that when he goes down on her and he freaks out he drops her off in his expensive luxury like car overcompensating for a small dick he like they're like ling she's lingering by the car like leaning up against it and he's like will you just get the fuck off my car and then the next day she goes to school, goes up, and he's like with his girlfriend that he just cheated on. I don't know why. She's stunning as hell. Maybe she's a bitch. I don't know. Um, yeah, she's a bitch. We know that. So she goes up to them, and she's like, hey, she says to the girl, like, do you have STDs? And she's like, no. And she's like, well, good. And I guess I don't either. <laughs> what does that mean? And so uh, what else? What else can I talk about here? And then... So, so then there's a scene where and it's just so randomly thrown in. I I don't doesn't really need to be here, but I'm glad it is. We have like this little flashback to something that happened. Like the dad saved Pauline from drowning, but he had a cold sore on his mouth. So him giving her CPR and saving her life gave her a cold sore and the mom's giving him shit for it while giving her CPR. Like, he's giving her CPR, and the mom's in the background, like, you got a cold sore, don't do it, just wait for the lifeguard to come. It's like, dude, this is a life or death situation. We don't have time for that shit. Uh, cold sore or not, this has to be done. So, the mom just doesn't give a shit. Like, I don't know what the hell her problem is. So then she pukes all over this girl, another funny scene, and she does it on purpose. She could have puked on her desk... But this bitch is a bully, so she turns around and just pukes all over her. That was another funny scene. Then she's at this cotillion, and she kisses this boy on the mouth, who's much younger than her. <laughs> but she kisses him on purpose with the cold sore on her mouth. And she's like, the little boy's like, I was only dancing with her because I thought she was retarded or something. <laughs> Not PC. And so then, yeah, she goes home, and there's this jump rope girl that they set up earlier in the film, who the hell just jump ropes in front of their house like that? Like, you could do that in the backyard. But it's like she's doing it in the front yard so that she can get all this attention and everybody can see her. But then when people start to acknowledge her, like Pauline, she gives them shit about it. Like, what are you looking at? It's like, if you don't want people to look at you being weird doing jump rope in your front yard, go in the backyard. That's what the backyard's for. So I just thought that was a bitchy thing for her to say. It's like, it's... Like, I thought that's what you want. So, but anyways, 
so she kidnaps her as she comes up with this plan. She basically thinks that she can become a professional surgeon overnight by going to the library, renting a couple of books, skimming through them, and now she's a professional. She kidnaps the jump rope girl. She kidnaps her own sister. She, like, you know, puts the rag on her mouth and knocks her out. And I like that it actually takes quite a few seconds and there's a struggle. It's not like in other movies where they put the rag over their face and they just drop instantly. Like, it's actually, like, it takes a while for both of them. And she drugs her dad, and now she's got them both set up in the garage to perform lung, uh, you know, lung surgery on. She's got, what's it, you know, lung replacement. She's got this new donor, you know, the girl who can jump rope a bunch. So I guess that makes sense. She can jump rope a lot. So she's got a good pair of lungs. She's going to take her lungs and give it to her sister who has cystic fibrosis. And also earlier, I forgot to mention, she picks up a dead pigeon or like some dead bird off the ground, takes it home and performs surgery on that as practice. And so that was a messed up scene also. And yeah, so she does surgery on her own sister and this jump rope girl across the street and kills them both. She thinks that she can just simply open up both of their chests, take their lungs, uh, yeah, take the lungs from her, just put it in this woman's chest and sew it back up and voila, I did it. Like, she's delusional. And then the mom comes home, she's freaking out, and she's like, look at my work, isn't it great? Like, I've improved in this area. Look, look at how I stitched it up. Like she's, she thinks that she did like a masterpiece. And then they're like hugging each other. And the mom's like yelling and crying at the same time. Like cry, like tears of anger and disappointment and sadness that she lost her, like her favorite daughter. And she starts crying too. But is it like cries of uh, sadness that my mom's not happy with my work? Or is it tears of, oh shit, I now realize what I've done? Or uh, tears of joy, like, oh my gosh, I did it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a successful surgeon now. <laughs> I don't know how to read that scene with her. Like, what are her tears? Or the, Like, it could be one of the three I just mentioned. But I don't know. I like to think that maybe it's tears of, oh shit, now I realize what I've done. Maybe reality finally set in. And she's like, oh, I just killed my sister. Like, she didn't even have, like, tubes in them and like the monitor systems no ivs nothing she did not research shit she was not prepared for this surgery <laughs> at all she just cuts them up takes their lungs out and thinks that that's all she needed to do and so yeah that's the movie it ends with them like hugging each other and crying with her poor little sister in the background dead just blood coming out of her mouth as she's all ripped open Fuck, that's brutal. Those are my thoughts. What did you think about this movie? Put all your thoughts of it in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, Alf Feeder Z.